Okay, so today I'm going to do... What am I going to do? I am going to do something about the render pass pool uh, for the Vulkan graphics right now. Right now, I'm not sure, is it still in the core? Render pass pool. This is still entirely Vulkan based, but it is hiding in the regular faux graphics. It really should be A, down here in this section, and secondarily, I'm not sure if it should be a public item as it is currently right now. It may be something that I actually internalize into like the faux session. It becomes part of the faux graphics session rather than... Because all it does is, you know, attachments, formats, sample counts. It just stores and gives up render passes as, uh, as is requested. And... These things are ridiculously cheap to hold on to. So I'm not really sure if I want to have the ability to... Uh, delete them arbitrarily. As opposed to just keeping them around to the end of the session. And then just getting rid of all of them at the end. I mean I do kind of like the idea of having better control. Uh, over like the creation and destruction of these things. But on the flip side like is it worth... Is the added complexity of doing that worth it right now? And I do not believe it is because the only place I have it is once in the application right here. Same thing with the pipeline pool, actually. Once you create it, it's basically super cheap. It's a super cheap bit of state, like a couple kilobytes, if even that. Probably just like in the order of hundreds of bytes. Now, the pipeline pool, no, because, would it? it? No, it would It would hold on to things from, like, the shaders. But the pipeline pool itself probably wouldn't have that much state either at the same time. And again, like, it's something that's, like, is it really something that should be separate from all this stuff? Or maybe I just internalize it to this and maybe split it out again later when I need it. But in the meantime, just have it, like, you know, be like you can faux graphics runtime you can like get you can retrieve the render pass in the pipeline pool but it's not like a separate object right now even though if it's 99 percent of the way there it's just like stored in runtime as a start uh, not runtime session as a struct i think i'm going to roll with that rather than have these kind of just lying around nearly randomly i mean where else where, where do we use this right Uh, that please in application we just kind of pass it around a little bit use it a few times then we use it to I create create or get yeah so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to focus first of all focus on getting render session render pass pool into the gra into the Vulcan side, and then then I'm going to internalize it into the graphics session. That's and then may probably do the same thing with pipeline pool, which is already at least down here. Yeah. So render pass is that even like yeah render pass? They are separate words, so I'll still keep it like that. So first things first, let's uh, move these. Render pass pool swap chain maybe. Move it down there. Render pass pool. It's going to be this. It's going to faux graphics VK that. Graphics log. This is being moved down to here. Mm hmm. Is it faux graphics? Export, yes, it still is in type devs. Vulcan, Vulcan, okay. Faux graphics, okay. That's a bit faster. In the past pool, this will be to. Uh, 
uh, RST render okay, we got that we can remove it from up here this held on onto format which doesn't even have to be here realistically it can probably be um, I'll just move it down as well the graphics log it's just log now do I even use log for anything yes I do graphics VK Oh, graphics VK. What I got? VK graphics. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, make sure that that's going to work. We're going to have to change up the other location, which is this. This is getting it VK render pass pool. That's fine. Although I wouldn't even have to pass it in if that was the case either. So I just get it from the session. And then this would become fo rend uh VK render pass pool like that. Change all those locations. Okay. Let's see, is there um is there a memory leak going on beyond just the yeah, okay, so still these ones I gotta deal with later, but first I wanna do this other thing. It's an acceptable level of leakiness for the moment. Vector. I have a mute shared mutex, yeah. VK device. Okay. So let's at least stage that as it stands right now. So Those things and then we are going to internalize it into the session so we've got this Let's go to the actual session down here have fragment descriptive pool so we're going to add it here and the pass pool like that I mean, it basically is like the fragment descriptor pool as well. Once you have it, you're basically going to keep it until the end, most probably. Trying to manage removing and adding it at the runtime is a little tricky proposition. And then what we're going to do is that session when we create it 
have this retrieving the cues, descriptor sets. Here we go. Uh, turn on formatting again, please. Yeah, there we go. The new session render pass pool dot initialize. Go to that. Okay. This thing returns an error code by default, or should. I can definitely expand the error code, certainly, with this. Um, if I wanted to. I don't really know if I want to really, though. Uh, on destruction, which will be up here somewhere, probably. No. Okay, create. Missing something. Where's the public destruction? Destroy. Okay, we're gonna have auto. Gonna pass pool star. Turning that, that's going to be added to uh, not this, but the public side. times I even use these anymore. We got that, we drill down, we get that. Okay, uh, still, the uh, destruction, destroy. Destroy session, here we go, flow graphics VK, destroy session, find this here. Let's make sure it initializes and deinitializes correctly before I try to start having things use it. be fine. Uh, if we do this, no change in the leak things. Nope. Okay. Save that down here. It's internal pools.
Okay. Now I'm going to add those. Then we go down to the application. We're going to get rid of this. Which also means in here we're going to have a few errors. Let's go until there they are. Okay, rid of pass pool. That's fine by me. That's gone. Next, rid of pass pool. So we're going to say, hey, you know, auto. equals uh okay I'm Pretty sure that this should be fine, but it's still complaining about not having definitions, even though I'm pretty sure. I do include Faux Graphics VK session, which is here. If I do go down into this, it's right there. Right, publicly available, yeah. Yeah. Go down to the session side. It's right there. That. For declaration of... Oh. Wrong name. So the other other locations we use it is the render target. And that so we can just get rid of this then. And over here we can get rid of this. And instead say, hey, this is actually just from the render path pool from session. And turn that. Got 
that. Got that. Okay, session under pass pool, session, session. Okay. Not too bad. Now, before I do anything else, do I want to change up how this even works? I mean, these are still kind of like renames, right? Yeah. Okay, now do I want to change up anything else? This is still kind of, what's it taking? It takes in a number of these, returns that. Return, this is all that's public. Initialize, deinitialize, the render pass, and that. The rest of this is all private stuff that like, do I really need to have on the public side? No, not really. I can make this almost C style, basically. Which is something I should probably consider then, actually. But do I really want to do it now? What about, okay, what about the other thing? The pipeline pool, maybe I'll come back to this. The rend pass pipeline pool. There you are. Yeah, it's one of these things. It just has three functions. The initialize don't really exist because I don't, it's a class that just sits somewhere. Hmm. Hmm. And again, I believe I only have it created once for the moment. So for the moment, I'll actually internalize this one as well. Again, like it's very easy to break back out. It'll be basically as if I can, if, if, if I remember how I do it, it should be just as easy to break back out. So where's pipeline new pool used? There, initialize, deinitialize. One, two, three. Hmm.
do I want to internalize it? For the moment, yes. And then I'm going to convert both of these to more like a C-styled kind of interactive. Free, uh, not C-style. Um, free functions. Is really the word I'm kind of more looking for. Rather than class functions. So to do this uh, session, of course, we're going to have to go down here, render pass, fragment, and then pipeline will be after this. So we've got that, I need to do the on creates. Okay, right now it's uh, trying to use the photographic session. Hmm. Easy enough. find the destroy session up here. Okay, so those items, we go down a broken quite yet. Okay, if we 
go down to application. We're going to trash this. This is going to be moved to this side. We're going to be removing this. this hold on is there as long as pipeline is destroyed before I'm deleting shaders and stuff hmm this may actually bring up an interesting quandary about that. That I just was not prepared for. But I will see how it works first and then adjust. If it doesn't work, then I'm just going to put it back and then I'm just going to like change it to free functions. Uh, do I even run actually the Vulcan validation? I do actually. So what do we got? Hmm. Not entirely sure. if it was from this or not. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get stash. Run it, see what it looks like. That's why it's so slow to start up. I keep running the Vulcan validation the whole time. Shut it down. No, those are still there. So that's fine. Removed, removed. Pipeline pool. Yep, that's gone. Okay. Now I want to change, start cha making changes for, what was it? Render pass pool. So that, first of all, let's not do Vulcan device, let's do graphic session. And then we'll also just start moving these into the, onto the private side, so.
So the interesting thing that's here is that this stuff, these structs, Hmm. Yeah, I don't actually have a public handle for this yet, do I? Maybe be... Uh. Hmm. Okay, let's not quite go this far then. Not yet. Let's do let's start on some simpler items. Don't save. Have this. We're gonna change this to from graphics session. session from that Sorry, what? What's going on in here? Why are they changing? Okay, whatever. I also have to That's still returning a VK render pass. Same thing with that. I don't really feel like adding handles for those kinds of things, low level items yet for this. But at this point it would just be like a converting handle. It's be the same thing. A pointer. With a different name to use externally. If we need to do that, we'll have to go back into session to change this.
created a new one and then I'm filling it out okay I need to I got a VK If Eric could return that, otherwise return that. I can actually probably just get rid of VK results here. Convert these entirely to using that. I don't want to quite do that yet. So we got we got this and that error code. That and that and that. actually does um, what is it this uses the session handle that uses device that uses device that does use session handle why is this one hmm 
Hmm. It's internal, so yeah, okay. That one's also internal. Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to convert it to free functions today. I, if I wanted to going to convert it to free functions, I would also at the same time do like a, there'll be like a forward version of the handle and just full graphics. But right now, since this is just Vulkan specific, I'm not really too bothered by it for now. I'm just going to commit this and I'm going to move on to figuring out what about these guys? Where are these guys coming from? It's what a VK buffer, some some buffers from something. I don't know which. 35, 3B, 3C, 36. So we, what do we have? We have one, two, three, four. We have four buffers. But for what? Is there anything I did more recently? Unless I can actually do, okay. Easy way to find out. Session create debug callback. If we've got an error, I'm gonna do this. We're just gonna run it and we're gonna stop on that whenever we uh, hit it. And that should actually allow me to go back into the function that's calling it and finding this out. We do that, we come back to this point here, wonderful. Got a validation error. Deep down, because we're doing the photographics destroy session. <sighs> right, yes. These things will give me no real information. It's just a buffer of some sort. Okay. I don't have XR right now. Armature? No, there's only one of these, so that really wouldn't work, would it? But it could be anim. No, animation would have been. I haven't really done anything on that in a while.
Hold on. Where'd it go? Okay, there it is. Oh, right, because, uh, yeah. I quit out early. No, because then it would also be images as well at the same time. Could have been, could it be this? No. Because there's no actual like plain render, like I'm not transferring data, so that's it's not this stuff. I really wish I could like find out. Is there another level of debug callback that I can do? I got, I've got everything right. That, 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 and that. I got them all, almost. I almost have them all. Let's try this one. Will this give me anything else? Maybe it like spits out. Or actually like, I don't know how much I actually bring out. Okay, I do have Herbo stuff available. Mm, but that didn't really help. Bunch of loader message stuff that didn't really help. It could be one of these uh, upload buffers. Give me a create buffer. Where do I call it? Here, 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 here. What is there anything I have modified recently? Not really. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first of all, these are pretty consistent. I'm just gonna here, 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 here. Here, 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 and here. And let me write down one of these. Uh, 3B, 3, yeah, 3B, 3C, and 36.
QA. The index buffer is thirty six. Hold on, nine six three eight. This could be it. Next buffer. So what we're looking at, we're looking at index buffer of 36. F8, a bunch of zeros, 36. In mesh. I'm not deleting the meshes. Uh, cancel them all. Carry on. Whoop. F8. Okay. It's the meshes. There's two meshes. There's an index buffer and a vertex buffer. That's why there's four of them. And there's two meshes. There's a triangle. And the thing with the monkey's head on it right now. Or, no, the triangle's handled separately, isn't it? So this would be like the, the, the two types of columns I load in. Even though I'm only displaying one. I'm not properly deleting these things they're not when they leave scope basically actually for this thing okay so what's going on here this is where I would normally be going through and saying hey delete everything right then I'll be going through the resource loader that's also something else I need to split split resource unload from loaders because once they're in It'd be more along the lines of how you would be deinitializing the objects themselves rather than the loader specific version of it. Right? Or maybe. It also depends on how it really does, doesn't it? No matter like how it gets in through a loader, it should uh, it should always be loaded into a common set of functionality, a common set of like mesh models, all that stuff that can be deleted generically. It should, should being the operative word. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for the moment, regardless, I need to unload things. So what's going on with this? what's happening right it's 3b 3c 36 it should be going inside and I don't know what's rebuilding but it's doing something
So there we go in here. Okay, we're unloading all. Great. We're going to go inside all two of the resources that we have. Of which we don't have an unload context. Which is why we're not deleting it, isn't it? Mesh loader. Paging mesh loader. Why or oh why is it not, uh, you know, it's being said? Like we do all this stuff, we get to the end. We got that, we got that, we got that. This is the load data. We add it to the load. So we then go to amload requests, which will be up here somewhere. Okay, and how do I do it on, let's say, material loader? It's loaded. We completed it. Okay, for mesh data. What is this? It's missing the un p unload context. So this is stuff I should have been setting up earlier, isn't it? I am not missing it from here as well, am I? Image loader. Okay, let's try this one. There's two locations, one here, one here. See this? Okay, this makes more a lot more sense. I'm missing it from the other thing then as well. When I'm creating the thing, the original data like this right here. That gets passed around. I'm presuming I'm missing it from here as well then. There's a big probability. When I am, here we go, material data, this, right up to here.
it didn't do anything. Uh, apparently. Okay, that makes sense. It's doing that a couple times, great. Okay, then we're going to go inside of here. Gonna go to right about there. And then we're gonna just run inside of here, right? So this unload requests, I have two for two resources. Thank you. Go to destroy. Uh, nothing on this one. That's good. I mean, yes. Outside of that, doing this again. We still have one list at. The end. Okay, we have two items to destroy. I just never go through the destroy list. Ever. Ever. That's a bit of a whoopsie do a whoops whoops diddly doodly. <clears throat> for that. Um, show me the truth. What is the graphics data, please? And that's it. And that's it. We've we've, we've solved this.
Okay, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else I want to do for tonight? I'll just call it an early one and a bit hours. Let's just check the CICD pipelines for how's it, how it's going. It's not going great because of a issue with the threads. My threading implementation hangs occasionally. Far too occasionally for my liking. And it's causing other problems. So let's see if I can actually deal with that as well. Zenderfo, it's probably like a test, which is it's a separate test for that. Now, this only happens like once every 20 or so rounds, and it's only on, it's on, been on releases. So let's just see, let's just run it a couple times here in debug mode to see if I can get it to happen. Unless maybe it's just too slow in debug mode. I may have to like run it in release with debug symbols or something like that to get it to happen. Or maybe just the like remove sanitizer, remove code coverage, and do it that way. Build everything. I'm going to guess I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to have to be a bit smarter about this, aren't I? Okay. All uh, right. Let's do something different. Let's see. Okay. Let's start that up, and I'm going to see if I can attach to it. So... Top over here. Let's see if I can figure out, or rather, search for engine four one six six seven. Okay, so GDB four one six six seven. So this is paused, right? No, it's not paused at all. Um, no such file or directory. Okay, that didn't help. That didn't work. Hold on while I do a quick bit, uh, bit of research to figure out how I use GDB again. Okay, okay, quit. GDB dash P, process ID, right? P, 
you trace not permitted but this is part no this is not paused at all so uh, what do I just like pause help do 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 aliases breakpoints running Nope, that didn't do anything. Mm, start. Stopping in step. Okay. Okay, let's uh, add a breakpoint, say about here. Somewhere in here, we're going to breakpoint. Line 76. No, hold on. That didn't work at all then. It should. I'm not even attached to anything, am I? Operation not permitted. Okay, uh. Trace not permitted. Okay, uh, let's try something else. What if I was to instead run like, I don't know, GDB. If I do this, okay, fine, running.
sorry, where is the app? There it is. That's somehow faster. Oh, no code coverage, right. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun um, test. I'm going to go in here. Actually, no. Gonna go through, we're gonna run GDB in Okay, that's not what I was looking for at all. Now I'm stuck in an internet loop. Great, kill it. Okay, we're close to that, what I want. Thread debug. Now I just wanna like uh, GDB. How do I start, just, just have it start running. I just wanna keep running it in debug mode until it decides, cause it's a, it's a hang. It hangs, it's so, it just gets an, I presume in a, a deadlock somewhere and I want to keep going until I hit that and then after a few seconds I'll know like it's then then I get the then I can pause it I hope I just need to like Auto start program, please. Okay, it says if I do this like uh, ex this, that'll do what I want. But it didn't. Hmm. DX is a very old one, it looks like. Uh, I guess man. Manual. Bunch of Python things, Pac-Man, Nix, M M M M M M M M M M Man pages, man pages, man pages. If 
files that don't actually have it by default. Oh, come on! Okay, there we go. I needed man db. Okay, x commands e. Okay. Use the file to execute when appropriate for examining pure data in conjunction with the core dump. Okay, x execute gdb commands from file. Okay, ex execute given gdb command. Okay. Should be like this, but start. running starts not the one I'm looking for I want to start stopping at the beginning start run it's just R oh, I could have just done this in the first place keep running keep going there we go there we go Yes, this is what I was looking for. Okay, get rid of this. How do I, like, control C? Okay. Uh, how do I do things? Help. Files, internals, running, stack. Help, stack. Where am I? With the frame, okay. Um, I just want to, uh, could I, like, back, oh, I could just, like, be backtrace, right? That's easier, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait for all tasks. Okay, we're uh, waiting for all tasks right here, which is thread 71. Go to there. Fantastic. That's what it should be doing. It's currently waiting. And it's a permanent wait. Now, there should be a second thread. Use this command to switch between threads. Okay, T. You're not really helping. No name. There's two threads, right? There's... This one and this one. So... Thread that. Okay. Thanks. Or is it okay? Uh, show threads. Okay, no, there are three. 
Um, he is at uh, thread run here, line 81. He's waiting for something. Because the other one, thread five, is also sitting here waiting for something. He's waiting for task lock. Okay. Wait, hold on. Task lock. Okay, great is this one from m task sync he's locked from that okay so the one thread the calling thread is waiting for all tasks he's waiting here the other two are both waiting right here m tasks empty or that m tasks available did i not call like I notified all. So I've been through this, right? Okay, if I go switch back to thread one. And backtrace. He is waiting, wait for all tasks. He's done this. And now he's waiting. Wait, he's just waiting for all tasks to complete. And he's already completed the tasks by the time it got there. So now they're just all waiting on each other. They're waiting for new tasks, which can't be done because he's waiting for them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wait for, what does wait for do? So I guess the idea I must have been having is that this was going to be, a, this is supposed to spuriously wake up, but it doesn't, which is a terrible idea. So I should realistically just wait for for a little while, uh, which will be what signals waits. Uh, let's let's get chrono literals going on, shall we? Let's just wait for, and it's what? The lock, then the thing. One millisecond. Realistically, I'd want it even less, so. As little time as possible. We'll just kind of do something like that. Now, how do I make sure that's even um, going to work? What?
So this is just returning right away anyways. Shouldn't it be like going through a loop? This is like, and this is obviously a very novice way to do it. But it's the way I know. How? How is this? I start the timer before I even start this. And these test tasks take what? 50 milliseconds each. There's two threads. So I need what? 10, 20. So I need 40 the whole time right 50 milliseconds I need a thousand milliseconds for a full second that's what I'm waiting for right uh, full yeah full second so I need 10 to reach half 20 to make the whole thing I've got two threads working through this stuff so I need Twenty times number of threads. Yeah, yeah, no, that'd be correct. And it's still completing faster than a second, even though I do start the timer off earlier. What? am I doing here? I'm sorry, what? And it's in debug mode. Oh, no, no, it's an... Right, because now they're both running... Now they're just in processing this, yeah. Hey, it actually took only one millisecond to come back from it, so that's well, that's not bad. I need to actually uh, rebuild it first. The very next millisecond, it returned. It returned. Okay, so what's nanoseconds per millisecond? One millisecond equals a million nanoseconds. So if I want to do like, right, 10, so like 5,000, uh, sorry, nanoseconds.
Can I do like one millisecond of divided by 20? Okay, well, there's no real way to actually test this beyond continuing to do that for, I'll do it for a couple more runs and then we will see how it goes. And then if it passes the next, say, half minute of me doing this, then I'll just throw it up and onto the CI servers and see if it starts failing again. Because it was, again, a very occasional thing. Once every 20, once every 30 times. We'll see if this actually fixes it up. But for the mom moment, I'd be actually pretty happy with this. Okay. And then I'll call it a night with that. a I'll throw that up okay let's see how that goes All right cheers